Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, and you're watching Get Your Sax Together, the home of online saxophone lessons. Now, if you already know the blues scale, but you want to sound less like this, and more like this, then you've come to exactly the right place, my friend, because on this week's free online sax lesson, I'm going to show you how to take that blue scale you already know and make it sound fantastic. Let's do this. On Get Your Sax Together, it's my very passionate mission to help all of you solve those really gnarly problems like, I know the scale that this uh, jazz educator has told me, let's say it's the blue scale, but why don't I sound like my heroes? That's the kind of question that I'm committed to trying to answer for you guys, and today I'm going to do just that. I'm going to show you why your blue scales aren't sounding great, maybe, <laughs> and what you can do to make them sound fantastic or even more fantastic than they already do. There's a fantastic PDF for today's lesson which has got all the musical examples written out that you're about to see. So just use the URL that you can see there or click the link in the description and you will get access to that free resource. Also, you can get access to my gift to you which is a free one hour saxophone success masterclass where I run through all sorts of stuff about improvising, practicing, setting up your saxophone, and a whole bunch of other tips and tricks to really bring your playing on super fast. So that is the URL that you can see on screen now, or you can also click the link in the description. That's a one hour free lesson. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you do, because it's absolutely wicked. All right, on with today's lesson. Let's have a look at this blues thing and see what's going wrong. <laughs> It's the blue scale, the building block of almost everybody's solos um, up to intermediates because it can be used over almost anything and it's supposed to sound great. Those six notes are supposed to be the Lord of the Rings scale, the one scale to rule them all that can make you sound great when you're improvising, but it rarely does, does it? <laughs> You get your six notes and you're like, oh, wicked. Now I'm going to sound like Grover. Now I'm going to sound like uh, Brecker, Sanborn. You know, I can solo on pop stuff. I'm going to sound amazing in a blues band. It's done. I've cracked it. But you go to take your solo using that scale and suddenly you start sounding a bit like this. <laughs> And it's all a bit rubbish, isn't it? Why? Why? Why is that? And I'll tell you why. It's because you haven't built up any language. You haven't built up any repertoire. You haven't learned any licks. You don't know how to phrase it properly to make these notes sound fantastic. So today, I'm going to show you the best way of sounding better using the blue scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy some people who already sound fantastic using the blue scale and we're going to learn from them. Now, I have not spent a long time collecting these musical examples. It was literally just dip and mix. Dip and mix? What the hell's dip and mix? Pick and mix. <laughs> I just went into the sweet shop of sax players and just picked out a few things. So I've picked out a Grover Washington lick from just the two of us. I've picked out a Dave Sanborn lick from his tune over and over. And I've picked out a Lenny Pickett riff from the Tower of Power song, Soul Vaccination. Why have I picked those players? And why have I picked those songs? Because they sound wicked. <laughs> That's why. Because <laughs> all three of them sound absolutely wicked playing the blue scale. So it's just common sense, isn't it? You want to learn the blue scale, Listen to people who sound wicked playing the blue scale and just copy it. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're going to come to me and say, yeah, okay, Jamie, fine, but I don't want to copy everybody. I want to be original. I want to be creative. 
I don't want to play somebody else's licks. I want to play music from my heart. <laughs> well, I'll say to you, 100% go ahead and do that. But the way to learn the language of this music is to emulate the people who sound fantastic doing it. Then you can make it your own. And when you do make it your own, you're going to sound that much better. I mean, feel free, go ahead, play any notes you want on the blue scale. Um, and if you like the result, yes, well done. But if you want to sound a bit more authentic and you want to sound more convincing and you want to sound like you really know what you're doing, then this is the way to do it. So without further ado, let's get into this process. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take a lick, we're going to learn what the notes are, we're going to then transpose it into one key, okay, which is going to be concert E minor for the purposes of this video, F sharp minor for tenor. And then we're going to play a completely different backing track and try and work in these licks. Sound like a plan? <laughs> All right, let's do it. First up, we have the one and only Grover Washington Jr. and his fantastic solo on the soul funk classic, Just the Two of Us with Bill Withers. Now, this lick comes in at three minutes and 15. It's near the beginning of his solo, which is at the end of the track. So let's have a little listen. I'm going to play you a little bit of a lead up until it gets to his bit and then I'm going to loop the lick that we are going to learn. Now I'm going to talk in tenor pitch and this is in G minor for tenor, okay? We're using the G minor blues scale for this one and then as I mentioned earlier we're going to transpose it into the key of the backing track but that's a bit later. First of all let's have a listen to this little Licky McLickston. Here we go. How good is that? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic lick. I'll play it one more time, nice and slowly in the original key so that you can see what's going on. Hang on. <laughs> Now, one of the really cool things about uh, the way he plays this is he uses the side D, uh, the part like, you know, the palm key instead of middle D. Uh, that means you can kind of scoop into it, which gives it a really fantastic sound. So let's play it one more time up to speed now. Remember, it's going to be one, two. Here we go. <laughs> Now, are you paying attention? Because this is one of the most important things I'm going to say through this lesson. So prick your ears up. One of the most important parts of this whole process is copying the phrasing exactly. I'll say that again. One of the most important things of this process is copying the phrasing exactly. What's long? What's short? What is scooped? What is bent? These are all the things that make the blues scale sound fantastic. Now, there's quite a few bends in different places in this phrase. So if I played it without any bends, it would just sound like this. Which still sounds good. Don't get me wrong, that still sounds good. But with the bends, it transforms it. And really, that's what you're after. You're trying to tap into the, the soul, you know, like the, the feeling of the blues, the feeling of that lick, the feeling of the scale, the real emotion within it, okay? Copy the phrasing, eke out all that feeling you can from 
the phrase. So what we're going to do now is transpose it. Okay, we're just going to take that blue scale and we're going to transpose it. Now, I've got a backing track from Improvisation Mastery that we're going to jam over. Okay, sounds like this. And that is in concert E minor. So F sharp minor for sax. We've learned this Grover lick in G minor, so let's now transpose it. Uh, which way is it actually? <laughs> it's down a semitone, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to be really smart and say, which way is it that I couldn't do it myself? Yeah, we're going to transpose the whole thing down one semitone. So you'll see the notes on the screen, and this is what it sounds like transposed down into F sharp minor. <laughs> You can actually play this in the lower octave or the higher octave, and that's another part of the thing. You've got to work out what the best octave is for you. Whether it's an alto or tenor, that's going to be different, all right? As well as the phrasing, you need to copy that rhythm, baby. You need to get right in the groove, which is one of the reasons why you might not be sounding that great using the blues scale. It's got to be in the pocket. You've got to copy it exactly, all right? Let's now see how this uh, Grover Washington lick sounds over a completely different backing track. Here we go. Now, you notice that I didn't play the exact notes, and this is going to be a really key part of the process as well. Once you've learnt that lick, swap out a note here, swap out a note there. Try and like make the variations your own within that phrase, and that is how you start really making things your own and sounding like you've got your own voice. So you're going to take the basic phrase, maybe just change one note at first, or two notes, or finish it off with something a bit different, okay? Here's what it sounds like with a few variations. Here we go. Let's just rewind this. So I'm sure you get the idea. You can work with what you've got and work it around the phrase that you've already learned. Fantastic. Let's now move on to our second musical nugget that we're going to work on. So the second little musical snippet that I just pulled out of the rabbit's hat, I just pulled it out of the bag, is by Dave Sanborn, and it's from his tune called Over and Over. It's 49 seconds in. Now, you'll notice that this is an alto lick. I'm playing tenor, that's an alto lick, doesn't matter. Mix it up. You could even use different instruments, guitar licks, all that sort of stuff. Just find the range that works on your instrument. So let's have a little listen. I'll give you a little bit of a lead up. And then when it gets to the lick, I've got a little loop which is going to run around. So you can hear this. <laughs> you hear this lick. Sanborn is just, Sanborn is so epic, especially in the 80s. Check this out. Here we go. So let's have a little listen to that um, Sanborn lick. And again, you'll notice the longs, the shorts, the bends, the scoops, the rhythm, the punch. You've got to get it all. Here's what it sounds like nice and slowly. Now this is in ha. Now there's an interesting point here, which I'm going to get to in a sec. This is in D major. It's the D major blues scale for tenor. And I'm going to tell you all about how you can mix up major and minor blues scales right after this. So 
Here's what it sounds like nice and slow. It would have sounded different on alto, but on tenor, you're up to this. Uh, the bluesy note is an F. And I just think it sounds way better when you use front F for this lick. In fact, I'm keeping my right hand fingers down as well. And then front E as well. Um, here it is, a little bit faster. That is in D major. What's the relative minor of D major? Shout it out at the screen. Relative minor of D major, please. Down three semitones. It's B minor. Well done. <laughs> right, so you can take any um, blues licks which are in a major key and you can put them in a minor key, a minor third down and vice versa. For example, the Grover lick that we had before that was in G minor for tenor, that would also work in B flat major. So we're gonna take this lick um, and let's just call it B minor instead of D major. Now we transpose it to the key we want, which is F sharp minor, and we're gonna go down a fourth from B minor to F sharp minor. And here's what it sounds like. Now let's put that over our backing track that we were using before, the F sharp minor for tenor backing track, and see how this lick sounds in context. Here we go. Now, because he's ending on that flat and fifth, the first variation I might consider is making the last note like a C sharp or make the C that's in the middle into a C sharp. So instead of boop ba 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 ba, we can go boop ba 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 up to the C sharp. So let's see what that sounds like, starting to introduce these little variations to our lick. Yeah, so adding a little fall there, mixing up the C and the C sharp, that gives us a really cool lick to add on to the other one that we've already learned. So I tell you what, let's now mix up the two licks that we've learned so far, the Grover and the Sandborn, and let's see what that sounds like. I need to remember the, uh, the Grover one now, don't I? <laughs> Here we go. So already sounding bloody fantastic. <laughs> you see how this works? You're gonna do this a bunch of times, and by the time you've done this 10, 20 times, oh my God, you're just gonna sound so awesome on the blue scale. Let's learn one more, and then we'll start stitching all three licks together. Okay, it's time for LP, it's time for Lenny Pickett, one of the most fantastic bluesy pentatonic and blues funk players of all time. Famously, he um, was in the original Tower of Power lineup, but then he's done lots of stuff, lots of stuff since then, as I'm sure most of you are aware. Absolutely incredible player. And this is what you want to do. Don't transcribe rubbish people. <laughs> transcribe the best people that have ever played blues and funky sax, and Lenny Pickett is one of them. So this is from the Tower of Power classic, Soul Vaccination. And uh, every solo he does in Tower of Power is worth transcribing. But um, here's a little lead up, and then I'm gonna loop the lick which I chose. I didn't have to look very hard, by the way, with Lenny Pickett to find this stuff. Um, he's just all over it on every solo. But here's one lick which I chose, and that's what you gotta do. Just magpie a few little licks to begin with as you build up your repertoire. <laughs> Thank you. 
what a classic lick. This is in E minor for sax, so concert D minor, E minor for tenor sax, I should say. Um, you can see the music on screen. I'm going to play it nice and slowly. But the key component of this lick is the way he sits on that flattened fifth, on the B flat in this key. It's almost, it's not a straight B flat. It's like he bends the B flat down to the A. Um, it's a very particular way of playing the blues scale. And this one thing that he does is key to sounding awesome on the blues scale. Check it out, I'll do it slowly. You're gonna use your larynx to bend down from the B flat, almost like you're going to an A. All right, and then the next D, ba 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 ba. The, the, the D at the bottom is so ghosted you can hardly hear it. Now all these little details are gonna make all the difference with how good you sound using the blues scale. Here it is, nice and slowly. So that's how you're gonna start sounding really fantastic. Now let's do the same thing. We're in E minor, we're going to F sharp minor to make it the same as the, the song we're playing, which is that backing track from Improvisation Mastery, which for those of you that have got the course is um, example 2.2.4, the second half, <laughs> for those that are in the know. Right, let's transpose it now to F sharp minor, and then it's gonna sound like this. I'm gonna take it down the octave as well, or you could play it up the octave, but it does go to an altissimo A, and F sharp for tenor, which is a bit pearly. So let's take it down the octave. So that's what the lick sounds like. Let's throw it over the backing track and see what it sounds like. Bloody awesome, I'm born a bit. There you go, steaming. <laughs> Absolutely steaming straight out the gate. You don't have to worry about sounding good on the blue scale when you do this process because everyone else is taken care of sounding brilliant for you. <laughs> right, we've now got three licks. Let's put them all together. So here's a quick recap of those three licks. First of all, we had the Grover. Now I'm gonna play all these in the new key of F sharp minor, okay? Here's the Grover. Then we had the Sanborn, sounds like this. Then we had the Lenny Pickett, which sounds like this. So, Let's see if I can kind of keep them <laughs> mostly in my head, throw them over the backing track, and then between them, use them as inspiration to create my own little phrases and licks. And you'll soon see how amazing it sounds. Right, here we go. So there you have it, there's the finished product. I've taken those three licks and I've kind of used them as inspiration, you know, bending that fifth note that I learned from the Lenny example, using percussive short notes like I learned from the Sanborn. 
like smooching and smearing those notes, uh, really sort of in a really sexy way uh, that I learned from the Grover Lick. And instantly my solos are transformed. Now, that was only three different short licks. <laughs> what you have to do then is take 50, 100. And by the time you've done that, you really start to get an idea of just how amazing the blue scale can sound and should sound <laughs> and why you don't sound like that when you're playing the blue scale, okay? Take those licks, learn them, nail them, then start making your own and you are gonna start sounding wicked when you play in your blues band, in your funk band, when you jam to your backing tracks, when you play smooth jazz, whether you play straight ahead jazz, whether you play gospel, whether you play anything, all these licks are gonna sit right on top and sound awesome. So that's all we've got time for this week. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson, learning how to start sounding good using the blue scale. This is the stuff that you really need to know that possibly not very many people are telling you. But you heard it from me now, so no excuses, my friend. <laughs> right, remember there's the PDF for today's lesson. You can use that link that you can see there to get your free PDF. There is, of course, as always, my one-hour saxophone success masterclass, which you got to check out because it's brilliant. That is linked there, and you can click all these links in the description to get free access. As always, you can buy me a coffee using the link there. <laughs> Three links, so many links. Um, and I really appreciate all those coffees that people buy me. I read all your messages, and um, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for giving back to the channel because it helps make these videos, and it helps me bring you more transformative information. Until next week, when there'll be more wicked sax content, practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy. All right, let's do it. Uh.